Hi, welcome to the Jeremy's Tech Channel, and today we're checking out OpenSUSE Leap. My name's Jeremy, this channel's about tech, go figure. And today we're checking out OpenSUSE Leap version 15.6. OpenSUSE uses two different ways to set up their distribution. One is a point-based or regular release version. The other is a rolling release version. The point-based release is called Leap. The rolling release is called Tumbleweed. Rolling release means that when the package is ready and stable, they go ahead and release it. They don't wait for a major release to release certain features. They just continue to do it. Point-based releases has a regular update schedule, and that really helps when you're dealing with deployment of multiple devices that you have to manage and be a sysadmin for. They give you two options there. Do you want to just continually have their most updated stable release for every package, or do you want a point-based release? Uh, the last time I took a look at OpenSUSE, it was the rolling release version. That was great fun. That was a couple years ago. And so this time I wanted to take a look at Leap and see how they work with point-based or regular release versions. I'm excited to do this. OpenSUSE is definitely one of those distributions that continues to find ways to help professionals with tools like Yast and all of the modules that are in Yast. It is a super cool distribution and I'm looking forward to showing you it today. We're just gonna do a nice walkthrough, see if this distribution is for us. Here's their website and just to ensure that you can see, you have Tumbleweed and Leap, you have your rolling release and your regular release version. Each choice will be based on how you want to deploy the system in your environment. I think both are super cool, but it says the maker's choice for sysadmins, developers, and desktop users. And when we go through some of these tools that they have, you might agree with them. They have a couple tools here that they mention. One is Yes, which we've already just you know mentioned a little bit. But one of these that really interests me is Kiwi, which is creating Linux images for deployment on real hardware virtualization and now even container systems like Docker. So essentially being able to set up your ISO the way you want it to, whether you want it on a USB uh, for a Docker container, however you want to use it. You can use it outside of the OpenSUSE ecosystem, but they have that available and that is nice. Now we went here, went to Leap and went to the download page. And I just want you to see that not only do they have x86 architecture, 64-bit, they still uh, provide support for PowerPC servers, ARM servers and desktops and laptops, and IBM Z systems and Linux One. They have those ready to go. And they have this offline image and the network image. If you're unsure which one to choose, I would suggest the offline image because most of the packages you're gonna need are already gonna be downloaded. If you want to uh, remove any bloat you may feel like is there, you could use the network image. As long as you have a nice stable internet connection, you could use that. When you go to install OpenSUSE, at least on their base offline ISO, it goes right into the installation process. It's not a live environment from this. Now remember, they had that other tool to create your live environment if that's what you wanna do with the tools that you want, that Kiwi tool. But here, this is like, let's get going, let's get this installed and let's move on. Just a note, they have a license agreement that you have to agree to. They also have this little thing up here, keyboard test, does my keyboard, work like it's supposed to. Is the layout appropriate? And they let you test it there, which is nice. Now it is going through and we can activate the online repositories. They have some baseline default repositories that you can use and then you can go ahead and add these other repositories in. We're just gonna leave things as defaults. And after setting up those repositories, it is saying it's going to initialize the installation. Now it's asking me which desktop do I want to use. And for this demonstration, I am going to choose KDE Plasma. Now we're going to their suggested partitioning and setting up your drive to handle the install and booting up and all of that fun stuff. You can do a guided setup or you can go right into their expert partitioner. Now they're going ahead and making sure our time zone is appropriate. And now we're gonna create a user. 
They have the automatic login choice right here, which is normally unchecked. If you want to use a way to choose your session, you may want to uncheck that. But for today, we're just going to keep it default. Now let's install. As soon as this installation is completed, we'll restart. I'll get you caught up there and we'll walk through OpenSUSE Leap 15.6 and see if it's for us. All right, so we've rebooted our install and this is what we are greeted with here. Normally, I like like to start with this welcome. This is what we were booted into. But I did notice as soon as I booted in that this is KDE Plasma 5, which is a great and stable version of KDE Plasma. But they've come out with KDE Plasma 6. If you really want that new KDE Plasma desktop, you could go with the Tumbleweed version, which is their rolling release version, and it has KDE Plasma 6. But for this version, this is KDE Plasma 5.27. You can see the versions for your frameworks in the uh, Qt version. It's a 6.4 kernel. We're using X11. We're not using Wayland. And I think that's perfectly fine and dandy. But if you did want the more modern version of things, I would choose Tumbleweed for you if that's what you're looking for. So we get to this welcome screen and really... <laughs> Most of it is just links to websites. If you want to go to the documentation, it opens up a Firefox browser. This version of Firefox is 115.11, and it looks like clicking on the Git software, it goes to another web link and you can search for packages. So if I want to search for Blender, here it is, you can view it. So really all this is is some links to some important information for you, which is just fine. I've gotten a little spoiled with a lot of functionality for setting up your system, but they probably have things pretty much set up the way you need them. So they've left some transparency here with their menu, which is perfectly fine. I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at what they've included into this distribution. I'm thinking of, you're wanting to deploy this on like 10 machines in an office, and you want everything to be the same. What is the default setup here? It's already very nicely laid out. You've got Kate, looks like LibreOffice has installed a couple of very important games like K-Mines and K-Mojong. You've got GwenView Ocular, which is by the way, a great document viewer for PDF viewing. KML is installed. They have a VNC viewer already set up. VLC is their media player. You've got some of the K-Suite stuff the KDE stuff with some extras that they've added. Then you've got your utilities here, which is nice. I want to go ahead and go to the YAST Software Center. It's asking for the password that I've already set up. This is the YAST Software Manager. And so if I search GIMP, there you go. It's ready to install. You could install it from here, just so you can see. If you're used to installing, it shows all the dependencies that are needed. It is a good software manager, but it looks like they also have the Discover Software Center here as well. And it successfully installed GIMP. I mean, that was very easy and simple. So if I search for GIMP, there it is. I can run it just like any other time I have ran GIMP. They also have the Discover Center here. I'm curious to see why you would choose one over the other. I have a suspicion about flat packs, which it is set here. You can add flat hub right here into the discover center. There's KDE software center. You can do that. And that is nice. They also have some other repositories that you can have running through here. And so now I'm guessing I am going to have access to the Flatpak version of GIMP as well. I'm going to take a look. So you could install the Flatpak version if you would prefer. One of the things that a lot of distributions, and I really think it's the software centers themselves, sometimes you can see both sources under the same entry. Sometimes they're separated. So for Blender, you have, this is the OpenSUSE package that is 33 megabytes. And then this Blender package is the Flatpak application and is 433 megabytes because remember it's a containerized package for this application. And that is not a problem, but I did want to point that out that you can see that and get things going. And already configured, there's not much here. If I were a user for me to need to set up, maybe I prefer a different office suite. Maybe I prefer a different 
video player. See, like on this instance, though, look, you've got this, the flat pack or the OpenSUSE Elite version, and I can choose between the two, but that's not always the case. Like for instance, with Blender, I don't know what the difference is. Maybe there's a naming convention difference. If you know why that is the case in some of these software centers, let me know uh, in the comments. That would really be helpful because I don't understand why. Reality here, we could easily install something through the terminal as well. That is not a problem, but I do like having these tools. I'm gonna let that install. We have the Dolphin File Browser, which anyone using KDE will tell you is a great file manager. It is super sweet, love it. I do want to quickly configure the desktop and wallpaper to see what pre stuff they have. They do not add very many, and I don't think that's a problem. I think that is perfectly acceptable to give you just a couple of wallpapers. That one does not look good here. I'm gonna go back to this guy. But remember, with KDE, you can always get new wallpapers, and that is fine. The big thing about OpenSUSE is their YAST control center. If you are a sysadmin or you are a big time power user, or you've got to deploy OpenSUSE across multiple environments, whether it's a desktop or a server or whatever it is across multiple locations or devices. This just does an excellent job of giving you all the information you need to make things happen easily and quickly. If you're just a home user, a lot of these may not matter to you that much, but there is some things here that can be nice to deal with and work through. They've got a bootloader selection here. Maybe you want to set up Grub for EFI or you don't want it to be managed. Um, you want to set up some kernel parameters, some bootloader parameters. You can set it up here. And I think that is just slick and easy for personal users as well. So it's not like this is just for system administrators. I do like that there are some options here that you can work through. This walks through and talks about what is currently running, what services are currently running, and what is available. If you want to see that and control that, that is a nice option here. Walking through. <laughs> I just like how much control is easily set up for you graphically. Maybe you have to deal with Active Directory. They have that set up here and including installing hypervisor and tools. I use Vert Manager. That's what I'm running here. It's not a big deal to set that up, but they have a graphical tool for virtualization and getting that set up. The YAST Center is just where so much of what makes this special shine. I really believe that people who love OpenSUSE, many of them love it because of this control center. It is very, very nice. This is what is running on idle here. We're running, you know, 2.3 gigabytes out of the 16. A CPU is barely moving. It's working just fine. So that was simply OpenSUSE Leap 15. Point six with the KDE desktop environment. And there isn't much to say, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that in a good way. I would consider Leap to be in this world, maybe closer to a Debian. Like It looks like it's really trying to be a super stable environment for people to use. So you're thinking a workstation and an office with a, a server system somewhere else. I think that's really the target audience for Leap. And if that's something that interests you, this can definitely hit the mark. You can install flat packs. So that was very easy. So you can use flat packs if you need more up-to-date versions of certain pieces of software. You have that amazing YAST control center for a lot of sysadmin stuff, but a lot of personal stuff done practically and graphically as well. That is very, very nice. The install process was very straightforward. It definitely has a feel for a business or a small work environment or someone who just really wants a stable system. They're used to working with SUSE and they just want to have their desktop environment, their control center, and a couple of applications that they need. I think that shows a lot going on. I mean, we essentially booted this in very simply with pretty much everything you need pre-installed. Would I use OpenSUSE? Maybe. I probably would go with the Tumbleweed version. 
I think it would be hard for me to not be able to use the newest version of KDE Plasma if I chose to go that route. For some of you, you may not care. And I think that's really what comes down to it. One of the things I was missing with that, with the last time I reviewed, and it was Tumbleweed, a couple years ago was there was some ways to uh, set up your desktop environment to some looks that you could set up just easily by clicking and I didn't experience that here but I don't think that obviously didn't affect my experience I just feel like I experienced a nice stable environment that is easy to use and if you need some newer packages if there's a flat pack version of it you can use that I think that would really suffice for you but I'm not gonna lie I was a little disappointed at first until I thought it through that I didn't get to see KDE Plasma 6. Some of the versions of the software were very close to the Flatpak versions, so it wasn't like they were just like these super old packages. However, I do think if that matters to you, you should consider maybe using Tumbleweed for that. I would say, like I was mentioning earlier, Leap is more like the Debian of their two distributions, and the Tumbleweed is closer to if Fedora was a rolling, rolling release kind of situation, you know? Uh, maybe not as bleeding edge as Arch can be, but something along those lines. I really do like how they approach some things. I know there is an enterprise layer there that is a part of this ecosystem that affects why it had this feel to it. And I don't think that's good or bad. I think it's just a preference for you. What do you think of OpenSUSE? Is it something that you use daily? Is it something that I miss? Go ahead and share in the comments. If you enjoyed and you made it through this video, thank you. Please like and subscribe. Let's continue to do this Linux thing and I'll see you next time.